Hey everyone, welcome to the Idiomatic Top 3. I am Dimitri, Editor-in-Chief of Idiomatic and Movie Critic. I'm Nicholas, I am the Gaming Correspondent for uh, Idiomatic, and I hate vegetarians and hippies. Didn't you say that last time we were here? Yes, but I still do hate them. Ah, uh, <laughs> it has not changed. Consistency, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, today we're going to talk about cartoons. We're doing underrated cartoons. Uh, all right. Well, let's start with a basic question. What makes a good TV cartoon? Well, for a good cartoon, I need there to be like good characters. And not just the good guys. The good guys have to be interesting too, but I, it's good when the bad guys are also interesting. That you don't just have like one bad guy that you see for three minutes saying, I'm doing evil stuff, and then he disappears. And the good guys have to solve a problem. You have to have, you know, Good guys and bad guys that have personality. I'm trying to find a counter example, like just trying to find a, sh a good cartoon where uh, the bad guys was just like there, you know. <laughs> and I can't think of a single. I think you really nailed the, you nailed it on the head with that. It, it's true. I, the villain is super important. I hadn't thought of that at all until yeah. you mentioned it. But I can't think of a single cartoon, except maybe the real Ghostbusters, where the villain wasn't really compelling. Yeah, that's true. They had different ghosts every week that came out of nowhere but that was kind of following with the movie where you know no the movies you know two different villains that came out you know they weren't related at all so yeah and they were and they were kind of lame well let's face it it was zod and zod part two but <laughs> yes exactly <clears throat> um yeah, yeah no i agree with that and um for me it's good characters yeah you know uh, good guys and bad guys i think you can get away with you know, a lame old bad guy if your heroes are really interesting. Yeah. If you look at an epic uh, story, like an adventure story, for me, that's the difference between um, Inuyasha and um, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. Where I, you know, I don't really care that much about Inuyasha and company, but the the Avatar company, uh, you know, Zuko, well, not Zuko, he's the villain, but... Uh, Sokka and, and and Toph are just so much fun that that's that's what I come back to. It, the the adventure is great, but it, for me it was always about like what's Sokka gonna do next, you know? Well, I think you know good stories are important too. It's not just enough to have you know some cartoons that don't have any that pop in mind right now. They just think okay, those you have the characters here, and people are just gonna watch the characters. So just you know write any other story, any old story you want. No, you need to have good stories. I don't really care if there's an overarching story that, you know, holds the whole cartoon together. Like Avatar, the whole point is, you know, they're trying to beat the Fire Nation. And that what, that's what they do throughout the whole series. Or if it's just, you know, some random thing like, you know, G.I. Joe beat Cobra. And they never really get any closer to beating Cobra at the beginning or the end. I don't care. As long as, you know, each episode you watch are interesting. That That's what's important to me. Uh yeah, I will say for cartoons specifically more than other type of shows, I I find that cartoons have to be more episodic. Uh, uh, long stories that just sort of meander on until it reaches a conclusion really do not captivate me in, in cartoons. Like This is why I had such a hard time with uh, Wolverine and the X-Men, because it was just one big epic story. And by the time you reach the end, actually, the ending is really good and it makes the story good. But I don't want to sit through that ever again because it's sort of like I have to get through like 40 hours of uh, of cartoons just to get to that one end of the story. It's, it's like watching Lord of the Rings all over again. No. <laughs> and I think it's because cartoons see, they sort of move faster and you sort of tell more story in less time yeah. uh, as, as Transformers will more than attest to. <laughs> And when you stretch things out across several episodes, it feels even longer than in a in a live action drama. That's true. Uh, so that's really important for me. Something episodic. And another thing uh, is that yes, you're writing for children, but children are not idiots, especially not when it comes to dreaming and fiction. They they can understand complex adventure stories really well. Yeah. And I think that's one of the other things is I cannot send cartoons that condescend to their viewers. Uh, I'm thinking of a superhero, a Marvel superhero squad. Oh, I've not seen that. 
It's uh, well, it, it's based on the Fisher Price uh, uh, toy line. Well, all cartoons are based on toy lines. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a Fisher Price toy line, so okay. it, so it's the Marvel heroes looking really, really adorable and cute. Okay. And I was like, okay, I want to watch that because that could be very amusing. But it's it's just so stupid, and it's potty humor, and all the characters have the brains of of three-year-olds, two-year-olds. And I think there's something that uh, cartoon writers have to remember is that kids like to look up to things. They like to have things where they can imitate the behavior so that they can become grown-ups. It's sort of ingrained biologically. It's sort of in their programming. Right. And so if you write things that can, is targeted to their age, it has to be just a little bit more mature than they are so that they can look up to it. So if you write something that looks like they would have written it, it's going to be crap to them too. That's true. And if you write like a little more mature too, you're going to get a bigger audience anyway because older kids are also like watch. I mean, we have, we're still watching cartoons and we're, you know, in our late 20s. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Although, uh, you know, anybody who listens to the podcast knows that I work in the realm of the tween <laughs> as a job. Uh, yeah. So I watch an awful lot of stuff that's way too young for me, and yeah. I don't mind. So I, I never really considered whether or not they should address me or not. Cause... Yeah, but, you know, it's nice if you make the cartoon smarter, you know, more people can appreciate them. I suppose so. That's true. And, and what else? I like, it's not uh, absolutely necessary, but I like good animation. If I'm watching a cartoon, I like it to be nice and pretty. It's not 100% necessary. I can watch if this, you know, if it's really funny or if the story's really good, I can kind of settle for a very bad animation not that great but the animation is really what draws me into it first and what's it's going to make me want to watch it uh i don't think it's as important to me uh like i'm thinking of uh, tv shows like uh, this uh like 16 canadians will know what i'm talking about and americans will go hmm, what's that? but uh, uh you know it's it's a flash animated cartoon the animation is pretty pretty yeah. crap but I, I actually really like that cartoon anyway and uh well the american version of that where i mean uh, Aqua Teen uh, Hunger Force, for example, has, has really, really crappy animation. Yes. But that, that's the thing. Uh, I'm not going to not watch a cartoon based on how it's crappy animation. I'm not going to watch it. But it's really what, you know, initially is going to draw me towards it. And I'm going to be a lot more willing to give it a shot if it has good animation. And I kind of feel that the people put an effort into it. Okay, it might not be a fair assessment, but I feel that people put, you know, their effort into it. Uh, I'm going to be more likely to watch it. Of course, if people tell me, you know, you know, you should watch it, it's good, and I, I see the animation is crap, I'm still going to give it a shot because I have, you know, people telling me to try it out. But the animation is still uh, the deciding factor for me. No, for sure. I and mean, if it's pretty, you're going to be more likely to look at it. That's for sure. And I mean, like, I, to my knowledge, that's pretty much the... Uh, the the entire marketing strategy of the CW. If it's pretty, you have more <laughs> chances of looking at it. But uh, let's talk about your underrated um, yes. cartoons. Uh, um, well, you go ahead. My first one is one that played on WB a few years ago, X-Men Evolution. It was a very good cartoon. You know, it explored X-Men, but you know, the X-Men as younger kids, some of them were adults teaching them, and some of them were just teenagers going to school. They had very good episodic uh, stories and it had a good storyline going as well but it got cancelled because apparently it didn't have enough views even though they had like another season plan that was going to be probably great as well yeah from the uh, from the flash forwards that yeah. they showed at the end of the uh, of the season of the last season yeah. they, it looked like it was going to be really promising yes and also it gets cancelled because apparently I guess kids prefer to watch you know wrestling in cartoon form than they do X-Men Evolution, I don't know, because it, it was really in the time slot of kids. You know, it was really on Saturday morning, mm -hmm. pretty early. I had to set my VCR to record it because uh, I would be up at that time. The VCR? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's an old cartoon. TiVo was just coming on, you know. Okay. Yeah, and then and just to uh, emphasize even more how it's uh, underrated, uh, the, the the seasons are, have come out on DVD, except the last season that actually did air. It yeah. still hasn't come out on DVD because the sales were too low. Oh wow! I, and I have like the first three seasons on DVD. I, I really want the fourth one because like the third season kind of ended on a cliffhanger, and I want the story to sort of finish. Yeah, and I can't because it won't come out. And what about you? What is your first uh, underrated? Um, Duckman. Uh, it's a uh, it's a 
uh, adult cartoon. It's a completely different vein. It's a totally adult cartoon that aired uh, between 94 and 97. Okay. Uh, it stars um, Jason Alexander as a duck man, a private eye a widower, who's also a duck, and whose partner is a pig, and like a literal yeah. pig. <laughs> okay. And he has uh, three children and uh, who are being co-raised by his sister-in-law who hates him. And he's still in mourning. And his way of mourning is by being a complete and total pervert and being the scum of the earth. And it's actually really subtle because there's, there's very strong indications that p- p- all of it all is, is sort of like this sort of weird survival's guilt because he's, he's in a state of grief and sort of self-hatred mixed into it where he just behaves like the scum of the earth because that's what he feels he deserves to be. Good social con- commentary in that. Okay. And it's really funny. And it, it, yes, it can be very crass, but it's... Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> it's uh... very funny. And it has the best... Uh, ending to the series ever if, if the, i'm not going to spoil it obviously but you cannot ask for a better ending to the series okay that's interesting i hadn't even heard of that one it, it's crudely drawn i should warn you okay well <laughs> see but you recommended it so i would watch it even though it's crudely drawn i would not have been drawn to it initially but i would watch it now uh, uh how about your uh, second uh, overrated pick second overrated i discovered when i misprogrammed my vcr to record x-men evolution and um it recorded Yu-Gi-Oh! instead, which is a cartoon based on a card game. And I kind of was kind of interested in it because I, I used to play Magic the Gathering when I was younger, and I was a nerd. Okay, I'm still a nerd, but when I was younger, I played Magic the Gathering. Which is for, you played Yu-Gi-Oh! too, didn't you? Uh, just the video game. Oh, okay. Because, again, I was looking for games that were kind of like Magic the Gathering. But, um, yeah, and I recorded a few episodes, and it, it kind of goes somewhere, but it is such a horrible cartoon. It's it's the premise is really really stupid, and the stories are lame. So why is it underrated? Cause, yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Because <laughs> there is something on YouTube called Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series where they make fun of the series, and those are the funniest videos I have ever seen. Where they actually make fun of it, like, oh, I'm going to take over the world by playing this children's card game. And there's like 50 episodes in, and it's all hilarious. And I was only able to appreciate the YouTube thing because I suffer through the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. So that's why it's underrated. Not because it's a really great cartoon, but just because of the YouTube series. I don't think you're following the spirit of this, of what we're doing here. I, oh. I, I, I have to say, I, I object to this. <laughs> it's, it's like eating, you know, your greens if you want to have dessert afterwards, you know. <laughs> so you Yeah, but to... I wouldn't call the greens <laughs> underrated. <laughs> But the dessert is so good afterwards that it makes you appreciate the greens that you ate beforehand. It's like, yeah, it was totally worth eating my broccoli. Now I've got to eat a dessert. <laughs> Again, about underrated, I- I'm going to quote uh, The Princess Bride, one of my favorite movies. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> oh, fine. You have to watch them together then. Watch a few episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! And then, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge and you'll love it. Don't, you know. <laughs> That's like saying Highlander the Source is a good movie because the Spoonie review of it is very funny. Yes. <laughs> All right, fine. So, what's your second underrated one, smartass? It's a good one, actually. It's uh, um, Transformers Beast uh, Machines. Uh, and that's like that's a good one in the sense, like, people hate the crap out of Transformers Beast Machines. Even I do. Yeah, you do? Yes. I did not think that 3D was warranted in Beast Wars, so I just completely stopped watching it. Oh yeah, Beast Wars was crap, but I'm talking about Beast Machines, man. <laughs> yeah, but then if you if you stop watching Beast Wars, you're completely lost when you get to Beast Machines. It's like... Yeah, it, it is. It is not a, 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 a new viewer friendly uh, show. Okay. I will admit that that is one of its faults. Although it starts its own storyline, it's completely d- different from uh, Beast Wars. It's, all you need to know really from Beast Wars is that they went back to Cybertron, but they did it wrong. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which was sort of the cliffhanger of Beast Wars. So. Well, not really. Beast Wars has just them going back to Cybertron uh, through time. but and, and then when they arrive in Beast Machines, they explain that things went terribly wrong when they did it. Okay. But Beast Machines uh, is so hated that the, uh, I, I think they've corrected it since then. But the Wikipedia entry for it like has words like rape the franchise and things <laughs> like that. It's, like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty severe. Wow. <laughs> And I don't understand because it's actually a really good story. I think maybe because they introduced the idea of organics on Cybertron, which people did not really like. Mm-hmm. But it's like whatever, man. Yeah. 
Um, but it's 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 it, it, it's it's dark. It's 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 contemplative. It's full of action, and it's just episodic enough that you're not bored waiting for the payoff. And the payoff doesn't take long because it's just twenty six episodes. So, of course, because this series sucks, so they didn't continue it. <laughs> no, no, they were just they, they, it got, had a set ending, and the okay. ending was really good. And right. they went back to the idea of the comics, which uh, was, has never been explored in the cartoon, which is that the war between the Decepticons and the uh, Autobots. Or at this point, it's the Maximals and the Predacons, or the Robocons, or something like that. I don't remember. But anyway, um, is is a religious war, which I always thought was a missed opportunity when the uh, Michael Bay movie came out that they didn't take that angle because it was just you know it was a post nine eleven war, uh, world. Yeah. it would have been a really nice angle to, to take, or a very tasteless one, either or. But... Well, no, as long as you don't have you know. Decepticons hijacking airplane. Well, although, yeah. how would you do that? It's Michael but, Bay, so you never know. But yeah, and so the story is dark, and it what what's kind of fun near the end of the the series is that because the story has it that uh, Megatron has sort of usurped uh, Cybertron on its own and has stolen the sparks of every Transformer. Okay, and so they start liberating Sparks, and the Sparks they liberate are some of the old Transformers from the G One cartoon. Oh, really? It, it, and so they're putting new bodies, and and, and they, they're still those G One Transformers, and it sort of becomes like this really complicated who's who of Transformers history, which is really fun because they'll go for the really obscure ones, like they won't go for Optimus Prime or anything like they won't go for the obvious. They'll go for like the one that show up in the episode that tells the origin of Optimus Prime and that has that appears in one episode like as almost extra guy I'm like wow. you learn what this guy's story is, you know? <laughs> and it became really cool because they went through the entire era, every era of Transformers and sort of t- took sparks from those different eras and it was this big dichotomy between like you know, order and chaos, which is really classic in cartoons. They do that a lot, but they actually made it in a way that Megatron came off less and less as a villain, as someone who, who genuinely believes that this is the way it should be done. And the idea of extreme order always comes off silly in, in yeah. most stories. But in the context of a robot, like the idea that a robot would want complete order, it doesn't look as stupid, you know? Yeah, because they're machine. Machines are made for order, so I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, Transformers Beast Machines, the one that raped the uh, franchise, totally underrated. And again, uh, it was uh, sexual assault at best. Yeah, that one was in 3D though. <laughs> again, right? Well, it was stylized 3D. Yeah, uh, it was like halfway between 2D and yeah. 3D. I didn't, I didn't quite. I saw a few episodes and didn't quite like the animation, so I really gave up on it. Yeah, it's an acquired taste for the yeah. animation. Although it's stylized, I kind of like that because I don't yeah. like this Beast Wars because it's just. It's really rebootish, and reboot looks great for reboot, but it doesn't translate as well for other series. I find. Yeah, yeah. But this one was, had a different style to it. Though. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I remember seeing a few episodes, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't get into it. Mm. Oh. oh, and they have the you know the plate that turns the Transformers into evil Transformers. Yeah. They have it in that series. Wow. They bring it back. It's it was like it was like the trouble with trebles in Next Generation all over again. It was like yay. That's, that's <laughs> insane. <clears throat> I don't see why people hate it. I mean, even if it was that bad, if you hate it that much, you're taking Transformers too seriously. I'm yeah, just saying that. <laughs> like, seriously, man. Yeah, that's true. I was like very reluctant to, you know, season three Transformers, where you know everything looks futuristic and new. I was like, what is this? This is not Transformers. Yeah, it's... but you were like ten years old. Yeah, but I didn't see the movie, and I was like, yeah, I was ten. So yeah, I guess. They, they broke Transformers for me. And now, I guess, looking back, I would be like, yeah, like, no, it's changed, whatever. We'll see how, how it goes. Yeah, that's a weird thing. I, I went back and watched them. Because uh, yeah. uh, uh, Dennis has the D, uh, DVD set, and I, 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 I took it. <laughs> <laughs> I just went like, Dennis, look over here. And then I just took it when he was looking away. <laughs> and <laughs> He's still looking for it today. But... <laughs> And I watched it and I was like, you know what, this is actually pretty decent for, uh, it's, it's G.I. Joe level. It, 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 as a child like you, I had the impression that it sort of went downhill. And, yeah. But watching it again, it was like, no, it's the same level of quality. It's, it actually is a little bit up from there. It's actually a little yeah. bit better than the early seasons. Yeah, yeah, I guess they have more material to work with. Yeah. yeah. Well, Cyclonus is so much more of an interesting character. Yeah. Uh, 
Because it was the reverse of Megatron and uh, Starscream, where Starscream was kind of a douche, yeah. and Megatron was the good leader, and Starscream was always trying to undo him. Yeah. And this one, Cyclonus and, and Galvatron was the opposite, where Galvatron is defective, yeah. and so he's a crazy despot. And you have Cyclonus, who's a good warrior and a loyal general, who keeps trying to go like, you know, Galvatron, you know, what you're doing is a little bit insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, they made him into such an honorable warrior. Like he was like, he was the Decepticon go like, it's too bad you're a bad guy. You know, it's like... <laughs> it goes back to interesting characters. Yeah. So totally. good. And that's why Transformers 3 is my number one pick for most underrated cartoon. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, because that's my number one too. Awesome. It, it, like, <laughs> this is like one of the worst recordings we've ever had. I don't care. I'm not editing it. <laughs> <laughs> well... Let's hope that our, in our next episode, when we discuss our overrated picks, things go a little bit better. In the meantime, uh, you guys can write us at mail at idiomatic.com or post a comment at idiomatic.com. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. <laughs>